Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you three stocks that I have been buying. So I bought these three stocks, not the week that we're currently on, the week before. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd just update you guys, keep that transparency up so you know what I'm buying, what I'm selling. Um, you know, I'm not going to try hide anything from you guys as other channels potentially could potentially sell stocks out in the background without talking about them. I'll never do that. I'll always reveal what stocks I've been selling and I'll also keep you updated with what I've been buying. But if you do want to have more regular updates or live updates, the place to be is on Patreon. When I do buy or sell something, I post instantly on there when I have done that. So if you want more in real time updates, make sure to join Patreon. Link is in the description. I also post two exclusive videos a week on there. And there's also a Discord with 600 members on to talk to as well. But we'll get stuck into these free stocks. So I would say there's potentially a bit of a mixture here. I'd say there's a growth stock. I would say there's a bit more of a big blue chip and also a bit more of a, well, a UK stock, I guess, really. So yeah. Uh, a good mixture that I bought um, last week. So number one, Celsius. I took a little bit of a risk because I bought this going into earnings. Um, it was reporting earnings on that week and I thought, okay, I could buy this here and it could move up a fair bit and it could move down a fair bit. And I just thought, you know what? What I'll do is I'll just buy because if it does move 10% either way, that doesn't matter to me. You know, 10% in the long term is not what I'm bothered about. In the long term, I'm looking to make over 100% on this investment. And with something like a Celsius, I'd probably actually expect a little bit more than that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie, you know, it's currently a, a 4 billion market cap. I think this has a lot of potential to get a lot higher than that. And the funny thing is Celsius are actually doing okay. Like with a lot of stocks at the moment, especially growth stocks, a lot of them have been absolutely hit really hard. But Celsius, in fact, you know, it did peak very much at $108 on the 5th of November. But it's down 44%. You know, we've seen a lot of growth stocks down, you know, 60%, 70%, 80%. So this is actually holding on quite well. Um, it did have a 52-week low of $38. Um, so, yeah, I think right now at $60 is where my cut-off point is where I don't buy anymore. Um, for me to carry on buying Celsius, because it is still a little bit of a rich evaluation, um, I do like to buy Celsius more towards that 50 50 40 dollar range so um yeah this is probably going to be my last buy unless it falls uh, massively again which it could do in this market but if you don't know what celsius does it basically creates these energy drinks these energy drinks that are, pro uh, that are supposed to be a little bit different more to the likes of red bull and monster a little bit of a healthier taste a little bit better for you and personally for me i actually use celsius and um, they have only recently just come to the uk um, and when they came to the UK on Amazon and um, I decided to buy some as a little bit of a trial just to see what the products like and um, because obviously with a lot of my investments I do like to use them and see how good they are had the Celsius products and I was like okay these are actually really good and I've ended up regularly ordering from them the only downside from buying in the UK point of view com compared to like the US point of view is that at the moment they're only on Amazon so it'd be very useful if they're in your local supermarket and you could go buy them and that would come through expansion uh, like they do in the US and that's why it's doing so well in the US as well as that uh, the cost side of it obviously in the US side of it they'll have their own production facilities whereas in a lot of the Europe at the moment there's a lot of transporting from other countries so um, that's probably my issue at the moment is that internationally wise the but that's where it further down the line it'll have more growth come from is where it expands internationally and has more facilities internationally but in, if you look at the US side of it it's very clear that this company is doing very well and the drinks are very popular and I think in the longer term we'll be talking about a, a very similar company to this one Monster. Monster has been a very good performing stock um, in the last 10 years if you look from 2010 uh, this stock actually is up over 1,255% since 2010, which is very good. And I think we have the makings of potentially another monster energy coming on right now. Now, like I said, I took a bit of a risk because I bought Celsius before the earnings. The earnings came out and I thought, wow, okay, I, I, I got a bit lucky here. The earnings were absolutely fantastic. Uh, they beat by 0.06. And the revenue was a beat as well by nearly 20 million. And that was on expected revenue um, of around 110 million. So to beat by that much um, is, is fantastic. There's no way around it. Very, very good earnings. Uh, revenue grow, uh, grew at 166% year over year which is which is unbelievable and really since 2019 you can see how popular these say the sales of the drinks have been going they've just gone absolutely crazy at the moment and like i said you've got a company that's growing massive amounts and also putting in now very good profitability and this is mainly from the us side of it you know a lot of this is from the us when you start talking about the opportunity internationally that is going to be huge as well now internationally revenue did 
decline 10% but a lot of that was due to the Nordic regions which they're mainly in at the moment uh, and that caused revenue to decrease 18% so there's a few little supply chain and delays going on at the moment normally that's very good growth but that got hit in this quarter now if you do look past that Nordic region into the newer markets they've been uh, launching in which you can see here revenue from other international markets totaled 1.4 million up 114% which is fantastic so apart from these little supply chain issues which if it weren't for them I'm sure the sales would have been strong once again you got the US that's growing a huge amount you've got um, the international markets growing huge amounts gross profit as well was up uh, of 53 million which was up 162% so the gross profit is growing massively and gross profit margins were still holding pretty strong you know a lot of gross margins for physical products at the moment have been hit hugely you know and you look at the likes of Corsair for example which is one stock off the top of my head a lot of um, or, or like a other product that will sell in the supermarket potentially like a uh, Beyond Meat or a Tattoo Chef gross margins are like you know single digits this here gross profit margins are still holding strong at 40 percent now they did decrease slightly from 41 percent but considering the amount of the logistics have gone up and the actual materials have gone up to actually only go down one percent is absolutely fine so that's a very good uh, margins here from this business as well which is why they're ramping up the profitability so well and you'll be able to see here that on amazon celsius is now the second largest energy drink with 18.23 percent share that's quite a good share um, and it's very much ahead of Red Bull now, and it is starting to catch up to Monster. It's only 7% behind taking Monster on Amazon, uh, which is uh, really good. You could see that happening uh, sometime in the future. You can see here, once again, record Amazon sales. Once again, the Amazon sales was up 74%. And the US stores that they're currently in as well uh, is 140,000 locations, uh, growing over 49,000 doors or 53%. Now there was actually so many strong highlights in here that I've got to try to keep it brief, but you can see here that the Amazon EU launch is starting to happen. So you can see here if they can replicate what they've done in the US with competing with Red Bull and Monster. You know, Germany and the United Kingdom are scaling from Q4 launch, so obviously uh, they're improving themselves. Uh, France and Italy also launched, so four EU countries are now starting to happen on Amazon. Um, and the great thing as well is like, they are they are really expanding like the coolers and um, display expansion. So like uh, if you're going to the US, you'll see some of these displays like this, which look absolutely incredible. You know, imagine walking in and seeing these displays. You'll be like, oh, what's this Celsius? Um, and really driving growth here. So I think these more displays they have and cooler expansions that they have. Um, you know, their own coolers here. I think this is going to be fantastic um, and I think the product really does stand out which is great. And you can see here the analysts at the moment are predicting good amounts of growth here. Um, now the crazy thing is that actually if you do start running the numbers that they're potentially doing right now like 133 million, the numbers that analysts are actually expecting would actually suggest that Celsius from here doesn't actually grow quarter over quarter which I think they will do. So that's also something to bear in mind and also 36 uh, million in profit which is pretty good going. And you'll also see here that Celsius is currently paying down their Debt on the balance sheet and debt to equity has really improved and because they're generating good amounts of cash now they're not needing to burn through that much cash it is a little bit low on cash i've got to say 25 million is quite low however when you're generating cash that should be okay you can use the profit to reinvest in the company which is celsius is currently doing right now so you'll be able to see here they currently make 53 million in gross profit and they have really ramped up that sales and marketing which uh, has increased by uh, 20 million but you can see here that the sale the sales is increasing by 70 million so even though the sales and marketing increase is still not anywhere near the natural sales growth that's currently going on uh, g a did increase uh, a little bit but overall you can see they're exp spending about 43 million back into the business so yeah i mean overall you know if this company potentially wanted to do you know uh, more than the current what they've done here uh, and they wanted to make more income they could do but they are reinvesting for that growth in the business which i'm totally fine about so yeah you got a company here with good revenue growth uh, good gross margins profitability really starting to ramp up on it yeah it, it's really exciting so yeah i buy i did buy a little bit more celsius the next one is disney which i don't think needs any introduction everyone knows disney everyone knows that disney has unbelievable brands something that the likes of netflix can never compete with these brands have been built up year after year and are well known around the world and as well as just having the kind of parks business now they've also expanded into the disney plus side of it which is great because you look at the amount of content you know the movies that disney produce every year and that just keeps cycling from cinema 
you know, into the Disney Plus platform. Sure, they'll create a couple of their own TV shows as well, but that cycle of content that they currently have and the characters they own has two very good income streams right now. Now, Disney around $100 is very much interesting to me. I think this is very good prices because you talk about Disney now that's currently, you know, getting towards the prices it was around the 1st of May 2020, you know, peak CV when you think, okay, the parks are now closed, when they're gonna open up again, you know, that amount of fear, which I think is very good. Uh, and then when you look here, um, it's nearly the price that it was at pre-Disney Plus launch. You know, you look at the what Disney Plus is doing to the business right now, you know, the growth that's offering the company, and you're looking at that and thinking, all of it's wiped out. So definitely Disney around this $100 mark, I really like it. I think it's a very good big blue chip company to be added in. And once again, I bought this one before the earnings, which was a little bit of a risk again. However, it didn't seem to be too bad. So um, yeah, but I'm investing in this for the long term as parks start ramp ramping up again, and also Disney Plus starts ramping up again. Same again, the EPS was not too bad, uh, but the revenue grew 23% year over year. And the great thing as well is that the um, actual Disney, um, Disney Plus subscribers actually grew quite well. You know, this was supposed to be in a time period when you look at something like a, a Netflix, for example, where it's struggling a huge amount, and you look at Netflix's number and going, oh, could Disney Pluses be bad? And they grew really well as well. So, you know, Disney Plus has a lot of potential to, you know, start getting, you know, the way that that's been ramped up in the last two years, and you like, this could overtake Netflix in the next few years. It could happen. So that's what's really good about this business. You're getting the parks and also the, the Disney Plus side of it. And you can see here, the parks are starting to really bounce back. You can see year over year now, you know, they've nearly doubled up. Uh, Disney Media and Entertainment Distribution is starting to ramp up quite a bit as well. And the great thing about the park side of it is that um, the parks are now going to uh, start bringing in, the parks are going to be the profit beast for the company. And when that starts recovering, that's going to generate good amounts of profit for Disney Plus or to reinvest in Disney Plus and the business. So you'll be able to see here that at the moment, they're gonna be holding pretty well compared to like pre-CV situations, but as the years go on and Disney Plus starts bringing in more good amounts of growth and profit, and also the parks come back and bring amounts, you know, good amounts of revenue and profit, which aren't still fully up operating nearly, um, you know, this is gonna be a company that has good amounts of revenue growth, more revenue growth than it has previously, it's gonna have very good amounts of profit growth, but same again, the company is still gonna be valued at where it was, you know, 2019 levels, you know, pre-CV levels, and this business is now growing a lot faster than what it has, you know, major new income stream in the business. I think uh, Disney is very much set to at least be a $200 stock in the next five years uh, with the recovery of parks and also the recovery of, uh, or the start of the new income stream of Disney Plus. So yeah, I think this is a fantastic opportunity. And the last stock, I've kind of done a full video on this one already this week, which was JD Sports, a UK stock. So I did buy some shares in JD Sports, same again. I just think this has been very harshly done on the share price. This was a company that I was actually up 100% on, and now I'm pretty much flat on. You know, the same again, it's gone back to the near the prices it was in the whole kind of CV situation. And you look at the business and the improvements it's done in the last few years, I'm thinking, well, this is a very much unjustified sell-off, so I'm capitalizing on this opportunity. And I'm gonna keep this one really brief, because like I said, I made the full video on this earlier in the week, so if you want more detail, go check that one out. But yeah, overall, I think JD Sports still has very good growth. It's gonna grow in the UK very well still. And then also in the US, the US is gonna be fantastic growth. It owns a lot of major brands. It's also investing into other areas, for example, outdoors and the JD gyms. And the profit is pretty decent on the business. Uh, it's still gonna grow at very good rates and Financial health wise, it's still pretty strong at 14% debt to equity. And um, you know, when you look at the share price side of it and you look at the, the how the performance has been, uh, you know, you, the company was previously doing around 6 billion uh, in revenue and 246 million profit. And um, we're going to be looking at a uh, round about 8.4 billion and 544 million in profit in January 2022, according to analysts. And like I said, the company has really not improved when you look at the valuation it's still selling at the prices it was at you know two over two years ago which is insane so yeah i think this still has very much gro good growth to carry on um expanding on when it opens up more stores and um, as it expands its us part of the business as well and like i said the valuation is back at I think pretty good levels for JD Sports. So yeah, I've been buying a few more shares in that one. But like I said, if you want more information, go check the full video out that I did uh, earlier in the week. So those are the three stocks I bought. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Um, have a good weekend. and I'll catch you in a bit.